Hello, in this lecture we'll be discussing accounts receivable subsidiary ledgers. At the end of this we will be able to define accounts receivable subsidiary ledgers. We want to explain the purpose for the use of an accounts receivable subsidiary ledger and we want to record transactions to an accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, explain the relationship between the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, the general ledger, and the trial balance. All right, so we're going to do this by taking a look at some problems and walking through them and talking through them. So here we have uh, a setup of a problem. We're going to perform work on account and invoice the client. So we're going to record this transaction into this uh, account and talk through what is going on here. So what we have is we have our accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus equity. So that is in balance. We have our trial balance, the green accounts being assets, the orange accounts being liabilities, equity being the blue account. And then the income statement is down here. It's good to have the trial balance open whenever we're looking at a problem because it really is a good sheet that can tell you, you know, what types of accounts accounts are and whether accounts are debits and credits. We are representing and we are representing them with positive numbers or non-bracketed numbers. We're going to represent credits with bracketed numbers in this worksheet. And therefore, we have a beginning balance here. The beginning trial balance will have the debits minus the credits will then equal zero. So we know this is in balance because of the debits minus the credits equal zero. We can also see from this worksheet that the net income is 88855 before we work on any transactions at this time. That is calculated as revenue of 3246 minus the expenses of wages expense and utilities expense in this case. Recognize that the um, brackets are representing credits in this case, meaning uh, that is net income, not a loss. It's, it's meaning that the credits are beating the debits by 88855 We, of course, are going to be focusing in on the receivable account in uh, these presentations, and therefore we're going to isolate the uh, general ledger to just the accounts receivable subsidiary account. So what we're going to do is we're going to show a short, quick example of what will happen in relation to the trial balance in this blue area when we record these transactions. So we can see what happens in relation. We can see what happens to the net income. Then we're also going to take a look at the general ledger, but we're only going to take a look at the general ledger for the one account we're looking at, which is in this case accounts receivable. So remember that all of these accounts, of course, would have a general ledger account. The general ledger account is going to record the transactions by date of occurrence. And uh, we're going to see that in terms of simply the accounts receivable. We're also going to take a look at the new thing here, that new thing being the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. So the subsidiary ledger is going to take the same information. It's going to break down the similar information on the general ledger. But instead of breaking it down by date, we need to break it down, in this case, by client. So here we have our clients, uh, Smith, Ryan, Adams, that we're going to be breaking the accounts receivable down into. That's the new thing. That's the subsidiary ledger. That's what we want to focus in on in this case. So if we did work uh, on account and invoice the client, client being Smith, then uh, we're going to have to record the normal transaction that we have in the past, record that journal entry. We want to take a look at what will happen to the general ledger. Then we'll take a look at what happens to the subsidiary ledger. So if we did work on account, if we go through our series of questions, we're going to say, well, is cash affected? In this case, no, we did the work on account. We did re receive something. We didn't receive cash. However, we got an IOU. That IOU is accounts receivable. Accounts receivable has a debit balance. We're going to make accounts receivable go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. And the reason people are going to pay us money is because we did work and therefore earned it. So we're going to credit the uh, revenue. could be called income. It could be called sales. We're going to call, re, re, uh, credit the revenue account increasing revenue. That journal entry would look like this. We're going to debit accounts receivable by the $35,000. we are going to credit the revenue. So if we take a look at that, then... We can see that the accounts receivable, a debit balance account, is going to go up by the 35. That's going to be this 35 that we are posting here. And the revenue account also goes up by the 35 here. It goes up credit. Another credit makes the credit go up in the credit direction. What happens to net income? Net income goes up from 88,855 up by the 35,000 in revenue to the 123,855. So that's what we normally would, would post. We've been learning that. Now we would want to know some more questions about accounts receivable, meaning uh, the question that we're often going to ask if we own the business is, well, how much do people owe us? 35000 And then the next question is, of course, who owes us that money? 
Well, if we go to the normal account that we've looked at in the past in terms of activity in the account, that has been the general ledger. And that gives us more detail. Here it is in the general ledger, increase in the GL account. But that only tells us the date. It doesn't really tell us who owes us the money. In order to know who owes us the money, we then would need to uh, post that information to the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, which of course is what we are focusing on here. So that same 35000 debit should also be represented in the subsidiary ledger. It should also be represented in the general ledger. Every account will have the general ledger. The subsidiary ledger in this case is solely uh, in, a, in relation to the receivable account because we're tracking the receivables by, in this case, client. So we want the same information. Notice these three add up to 35000 as does the general ledger, as does the trial balance. That is the relationship between these. They should always tie out. They should always match. All right, so then we receive cash on account from Client Smith for work performed in the past. So now we're going to receive the cash. We build the client. Now we're going to receive the client. That's the normal business transaction that we're going to have for accounts receivable. So if that happened, then uh, we, we're going to ask our questions. Well, is cash affected? Uh, yeah, cash is affected. We got cash. Cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So here we're going to debit cash. And why did they give us cash? We did do work. We did earn revenue. However, we earned it in the past. Right now, they're going to be paying off the receivable that we recorded last time, meaning that this is that 35. And uh, we're going to receive that 35 now, meaning that's a debit. We're going to make it go down with a credit. So that's what we've done in the past here. We're going to say, here's the transaction. We're going to debit cash, increasing cash. We're going to credit receivable, decreasing receivable. If we post that transaction, then here's the transaction to cash. Cash goes up, debit, another debit. Same thing makes it go up in the debit direction. The receivable, receivable accounts have a credit balance. I mean, a debit balance. We credited it, which is the opposite, which made it go down to zero. Notice there's no effect on net income. Net income has no change from this transaction because neither of those accounts are income statement accounts. When did we record the revenue? Last time, when we did the work, when we earned it. That's when we recorded it. Now, the, our questions again, well, when we're a business owner, we're going to say, well, does anybody owe us money? We're going to say, in this case, no, no one owes us money. Zero, the account symbol zero. And we might ask, well, I thought someone owed us money a while ago. How do we know, you know, why is it zero? Well, we could look at our backup account. Our accounts, our general ledger, which shows the amount going in debit, the amount going out went up to 35, back down to zero. Uh, but that only tells us by date, not really by who owes us money. If we want to know who, we can say, well, yeah, it's because Smith owed us money over here in the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. Smith owed us money, and then Smith paid us the money recently, and Smith no longer owes us the money, and that's why we are now down to zero. We see the relationship being zero on the trial balance, zero on the subsidiary ledger, and zero on the general ledger. So if we have another transaction, we have a perform work on account and invoice the client. Now we have Adams, we're going to say. Adams, we did work for Adams. We build Adams and uh, build them. So question on the journal entry, same question we have had in the past. Is cash affected? Yeah, cash is, I mean, no, <laughs> cash isn't affected in this case. We did work, but we didn't get the cash. We got something. What did we get? We got an IOU. We did work. We got an IOU. It's still uh, an asset. Assets have debit balances. We're going to debit the receivable. What's going to be the other side? Why will people be paying us in the future? Because we did work and earned revenue in this case. So the credit will go to revenue. Revenue has a credit balance. We're going to increase it with a credit. So that's the journal entry we've taken a look at in the past. We've got debit accounts receivable increasing the IOU, the asset credit revenue increasing the amount of money that or revenue that we have earned measured in dollars of course so if we look at that transaction then we have uh the revenue is going to go from zero in the debit up in the debit direction by 14 in this case the 14 apparently was the amount that we billed to the 14,000 here and the other side of the transaction will of course be revenue which goes from this 3 uh 59.6 credit up in the credit direction with a credit because the same thing makes it go up to this 376.6. What happens to net income? It also goes up. If revenue goes up, net income is going to go up. Why? Because net income is calculated as revenue, credit balances, minus expenses, debit balances. Revenue went up, therefore uh, net income goes up. 
So that's what we've done in the past. Now the new thing, of course, is the questions are always going to be, well, does who does anybody owe us money at this time? I would like to get more money in our business. And then we'd say, yeah, people owe us 14000 if we look at the trial balance. Next question is, well, who owes us and when are we going to get that money? Well, we could look at the traditional general ledger account to see more activity. And if we did that, we could see, okay, we, we got 35 and then uh, people paid us that 35 and then we billed 14 but we don't know who really. You know, if I want to call someone and say, are you going to pay us the 14 at any given time pretty soon? We have to know who. In order to know who, we go to the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. And we could say, okay, well, who owes us that 14? It is Adams down here. So Adams is the one that owes us the 14. If we add up the subsidiary ledger, the 14, the 0, and the 0, add up to 14, as does the general ledger, as does the trial balance. That is the relationship between those. All right, so then what if we, we're going to keep going on this. Of course, these are going to look somewhat familiar. We're going to build some data, perform work on account, and invoice client Ryan. So now we did another job, and we invoiced another client, that client being Ryan. We did work, invoiced the client, similar to what we just did in the past. Uh, is cash affected? No. We did work, and we invoiced the client. We didn't get the cash yet. That means we got an IOU. That's the receivable. So the receivable has a debit. We're going to debit it again by we're going to make it go up in the debit direction by whatever the, we, we build the client for. The credit is going to go to uh, revenue because once again we earned revenue. We did work, earned revenue. We record revenue when we earn it under the revenue recognition principle. Therefore, we're going to uh, credit the credit balance account, making it go up because the same thing makes it go up. The journal entry would look something like this. We're going to debit accounts receivable in this case twenty-seven thousand. Apparently, that's how much we build on this, and we're going to credit the revenue we could call it revenue we could call it income we could call it sales it's it's our revenue type account on the trial balance it's always going to be down here under the capitals when we look at our trial balance so we had fourteen thousand that people owed us in the accounts receivable asset we're going to debit it so we debited it by the 27 making it go up from 14 to 41 because debits make things go up well debits make debit balances go up and then we had the revenue over here which has a credit balance and we credited it, increasing the revenue account by the 27 because this is a credit. We did the same thing to it, making it increase to 406. What happens to net income? It too goes up by the 27 from 137.855 to 164.855 uh, because when income goes up, so does net income calculated in uh, revenue minus expenses. Okay, so then we're going to ask our question again. Well, do, do people owe us money? We, I'd like to get more money in the bank account. Yes, people owe us money. We did work and people owe us 41000 Well, who owes us 41000 right, Well, we could look at the general ledger, which gives us more detail, but uh, that we, we know that we billed 35 then we got 35 then we billed 14 then we billed 27 People owe us 41 But who? I, I don't know yet. Well, we can go to the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger which will break this out by client for us. And if we do that, then we can see that, well, Ryan owes us 27 and Adams owes us 14. So now that's who owes us money. And next, obviously, well, could we call them up and, you know, see if they have the funds to pay us at any time soon or, you know, see when that's going to happen. Okay, and then we got the receivable cash on uh, accounts receivable Adams for work performed received cash. So, now Adams paid us. So now we got the money back. Again, our, our normal journal entries are going to be the same as we've talked about in the past. Question, is cash affected? Yeah, we got money. So cash is going to go up. Cash is a debit balance. How do we make it go up? We do the same thing. We debit it. And we're going to credit something. What are we going to credit? We did earn it. So you would think maybe revenue. But uh, we earned it in the past. And now we're collecting on, of course, the receivable. So we know that Adams here owes us that 14. Adams is going to pay us that 14. Therefore, this receivable is going to go from 41 down by that 14 to, uh, you know, the, the 27 in this case. All right, so let's take a look at that transaction. It's going to be the same that we've seen in the past. We're going to debit cash, increase in cash, credit the receivable. So here we have it. We've got the cash here, and uh, it has a debit balance. We're going to debit it because we got more of it, and it's going to make it go up. And then the receivable here has 41000 and we're going to credit the receivable by the 14, doing the opposite thing to it, making it go down. So we converted one asset to another asset in essence. Notice no effect on net income, even though we got cash here, because we already recognized the income, of course, 
last time when we did the work under the revenue recognition principle. So then, of course, if we ask our questions, well, does anybody owe us money still? Yeah, people owe us money according to the trial balance. People owe us 27000 Who owes us the money? Well, if we look at the general ledger, I can see the activity. I can see that we build 35, we got 35, then we build 14, then we build 27, and then we got 14, and people owe us 27000 Doesn't answer the question of who owes it. Let's take a look at the subsidiary ledger, which is not in order by date of transaction, but is in order by client. And if we do that, then we can see that um, Adams paid us now. So who owes us money? Ryan. So that's good. So we called Adams. We collected on that. Uh, has anyone has anyone called uh, Ryan on that and see if uh, if, if, if if we're going to get the money at any time? And then uh, so now we are now able to define accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, explain the purpose for the use of an accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, uh, record transactions to an accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, explain the relationship between the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, the general ledger, and the trial balance.